Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use garage band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guide, Colin, and today I want to show you how to hack garage band's presets to create a lead vocal plate reverb effect bus. Sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. Let's start with what exactly an effects bus is. An effects bus is just a place where we can send a track or multiple tracks to that has nothing but an effect on it. And so it's essentially just another track in our session that has an effect on it that we can blend in to the context of our mix to add reverb to our lead vocal without putting reverb on our lead vocal. This is actually a very natural way to process because it plays to how we as humans hear sound. We don't hear someone speaking with reverb on it, we hear them speaking and we hear the reverb in the room. So if someone is talking in a big hall, you hear their voice and you hear the reverb from the room around you and your brain puts those into one place. It's a little bit different than just putting reverb on that person's mouth. It also allows us to custom tailor the actual reverb a little bit more than we could if we just threw it on the individual track. Now that doesn't mean never put a reverb on an individual track, but this is another way that we can blend in reverb that's very natural. So there's already a few effects buses in GarageBand. We have our master echo, our master reverb. We also have our ambience and our reverb knobs if you're working an audio track. These are called sends. An effects bus, a send, it's the same thing. So what I've learned over time is you can actually use the presets in GarageBand to create a plate reverb send. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we duplicate our lead vocal here, I'll just hold option, click and drag this down. This duplicates our lead vocal. So now we have two lead vocals that are processed exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and solo it. I'm gonna turn off these effects here. And we're gonna to listen to just this vocal here. I wish you were here and you will be next time. Sounds good. There's no reverb on it right now. If we hit Y or go up and click over here, we can bring up our presets. Because this is an audio track, we have access to the voice preset. And here we can select one of these that's gonna give us a few more options. So in this case, I'm just gonna go with the bright vocal setting. Now it's gonna prompt me because I've already done some processing on here. It's gonna get rid of any processing you've done. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say continue, but this is why if you're pretty far into the mixing process, it might not be worth doing this. Now this is gonna do a bunch of things at once. So what you can see here is it's added EQ, compression, an exciter, a de another EQ. And the issue with all of these settings on all of these plugins is they don't know what your audio sounds like. So while it might be tempting to just throw this on and all of a sudden our vocal sounds like this. I wish you were here and you will be next time. I mean, to me, that didn't sound better in this specific case because I'd already started mixing the vocal, but if you were going from a raw vocal, it might sound a lot better than your vocal already had. But that doesn't mean that it's gonna sound the best that it could if you were to tailor the individual elements. For example, this EQ is doing something that isn't necessarily what I want my EQ to be doing on my vocal. This compressor doesn't know how loud my vocal is, so it doesn't know exactly where the thresholds should be. The ratio is really high on here. There's a lot of things to these settings that aren't necessarily what I would do if I was custom tailoring it to my mix. But what it does give us is if we go to edit effect and reverb settings, we now have under here, reverb large plate. This is a plate reverb that we could be using on our lead vocal. If we go to that one, we could blend up this plate reverb here. I wish you were here and you will be next time. Which is functionally the same as this large plate that I've created over here. The individual settings are a little bit different, but the actual reverb is the same. It's a plate reverb, which is a, a great vocal reverb. And so now we have a plate reverb that we could dial in. Let's go back to our plate reverb here, that we could dial in to sound appropriate on our vocal. Now, if you've already been mixing, you would also have to go ahead and bring all of your plugins over to this channel. That can be kind of cumbersome. That can be a lot of work. But if you're doing this at the start of your mixing or before you've actually started mixing, if you set these presets and then you turn off all these effects and then custom tailor them to your song the same way you would if you're mixing completely from scratch, 
which is what you should be doing, then you would just get access to a reverb knob over here. This knob over here is now a plate reverb instead of a small hall reverb. And there's no way to change that otherwise. And that can save us some time because if you watched the video on stacking vocal effects, we had to create an entire other track to create the lead vocal plate reverb. And it's not necessarily a huge issue on one track, but if you have multiple tracks for your lead vocal line that change at different points for different reasons, and each one of them then has to have a custom plate reverb created for it, that could start to, one, use a lot of your computer processing power, and two, just, take longer than necessary. So if you're early on in the mixing process, I would definitely recommend doing this so that you then have that plate reverb already set up and then you could tweak it to be the better setting in the context of your mix. As I mentioned on this Vox plate that I created earlier, I could set an individual EQ at the end of it to really cater to the tone of the mix. You can do something similar if we go to our lead Vox where we edit our reverb settings and we select the large plate, well, you actually have access to an EQ here, the tonal balance. So if we listen to this, we really exaggerate this reverb. I wish you were it's got a lot of low end. We can scale that back. We scale up the mid, scale down the high. How's this sound? I wish you were here and you Definitely cleans it up. We could also maybe time. take out some of the mid, make it a little bit brighter. It just depends on what your mix needs. You'd want to do this kind of in the context of your mix. And then if you need it to be a little bit shorter, I you can shorten the length. You, here and you, will be next time. you can make it much shorter if you want You could add a pre-delay. This is essentially just a delay before the reverb. I, I wish you were here and you will be next time which could be a cool effect. You could even add chorus in on this, right? So there's a lot to this that you could tailor in the context of your mix. And if you do this across multiple vocals, then you have this one plate reverb that you can send your vocals to that's always gonna be equal across multiple tracks. So it could be a time saver. If you're near the end of the mix, I would recommend creating a plate reverb the way we did in that other video. That's gonna be a lot faster for you. But if you're just starting out, maybe try this out and see if this effects bus hack is helpful to you. Now, before we go, I just want to remind you that effects are great. They're helpful. They're a piece of the puzzle. They make your mix sound like it's in a real space and sound huge, but they're only one small piece of the puzzle. You need to have all the pieces of your puzzle to make your mix sound great. And you can do all of this in GarageBand. You have all the tools for all the pieces of the puzzle in GarageBand. And I wanna give you something to help with that. I've put together a completely free six step checklist that walks through the six steps, the six puzzle pieces, if you will, that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand completely free. There's a link in the description below where you can pick that up, so be sure to grab that. Before we go, I wanna hear from you. Have you ever used this little hack to create kind of an extra bus that's a little more tailored to what you need? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.